In the lonely, desolate cities of the northern climes, we find many of the more venerable streets to be lined most resplendently with elves. In summer, this picturesque tree, dapplingly shady and quietly rustling, softens the sun's pitiless shriek into a lambent, caressing sheath, a mantle of salubrious radiance for every living thing beneath it. But in winter, the towering elm sheds its leafy vestments and takes on sinister and portentous aspect. And why should this be right, and grimly satisfying to the spirit? Why might we accept that each family home be fronted, in the wintry seasons, with this military grey-brown colossus? At the jaws of hell, it is said, frowning down atop the gates of Orcus, stands a single L, dusky in aspect and with spidery, proliferating fingers, surrounded most profusely by numberless inchoate shapes, fettered beyond all conception, and terrific to behold. These are the diffuse embodiments of our human toils, profound sorrows, and vengeful cares, pallid diseases, and repining age, and the onerous petitions of need, terror's gruesome canopy, and famine's unimpeded spleen. And it is here, inside this great elm, where the god of sleep rests his heavy head, and pours from his yet anguished brain an unceasing miscellany of dreams, dreamingly outspread onto every leaf, where these unnumbered phantoms of dramatic nightly visions agglomerate in dark, teeny-weeny globes of a substance most tarry and sticky to touch. And so also, according to most authorities, onto the surface of the bark, in feeding galleries carved gravely into the very woody substance of the tree. And so here, at the gloomy threshold of this hellish gate, have we learned a tender lesson. That an elm thus diseased is one too heavy of dream. And, by contiguous reasoning, that the city blighted by these sickly trees is a city that dreams too much. And lives too little. <laughs>